That leads me to the question of social business. What is that? What is the social business? See, traditionally, what we know about business, business is to make money. So we go into things, design things so that you make a lot of money. So I design a base station in a way I make a lot of money. I wouldn't go to anything so that I will make less money by doing that. I will not do that. So my tendency is to go for a big money. And that's where the, when General Electric was making those equipments, they were making those equipment very bulky, very complicated looking, very sophisticated looking, so that they can sell it for a high price and make a lot of profit. And sell it to the hospitals, because they are the only people who can pay for it. Individual doctor cannot pay for it. So the hospital will be paying for it. Hospital pays for it because they can charge it on their patients. And the patients can pay for it because some insurance company will be paying for it. And finally, when you go to the insurance company for your insurance renewal, said you have to pay higher prices because your cost has gone up. So ultimately, you are the one who is paying for all this. And this cycle goes on. It doesn't come up. As a result, medical services become more and more expensive. Healthcare services become more and more expensive because they, everybody wants to make more money out of it, out of your problems, out of your troubles. They want to make money. So I was challenging the healthcare, uh, general electric healthcare people. I said, look. I don't see why it has to be such a complicated thing. I see it's all about a chip. Today's technology is a nanotechnology. You, all you need is a little space to put that chip into it, and it does everything. So it doesn't need to be complicated. Why don't you just put it in a tiny little uh, tablet, with it, which can be in the pocket, and I take it out and then do everything and put it back into the pocket. Give us the connectivity to it so that I can send all the images right there. You don't need to do anything at the spot. Finally, they, they, they are convinced and they wanted to collaborate with us. So they designed this and now we are using it. I was asking them, how much would that cost finally that you made? They said, it still is expensive. It will cost you more than $2,000. So they thought I'll be very angry at them because it's so expensive still. I said, no, you're doing fine. You have done the $2,000 tablet for ultrasonic. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Because once you develop that $2,000 tablet, I'm sure Chinese will make it very soon for $20. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you need to do All you need to do is to just to do the groundbreaking part. Once you have done that, for example, uh, these iPhones, in Dhaka market, you can buy for $25. So it's no problem. It's a Chinese variety. So <laughs> it's exactly the same. It does the same thing. So everything can be developed. And we have, we have our friends in China waiting. So the technology can be made cheaper. So the point, point I'm raising, if you want to rethink, redesign your thinking process, you'll be thinking how to make it cheaper for the ultimate person. How I deliver the healthcare at the cheapest possible way. But money makers will not think about that. They want to see how much profit they can make by making fancy clinics or fancy uh, diagnostic centers or fancy hospitals so that you have to pay off. So this is the difference. In, in social business, we're saying this is a business to make a difference. This is a business to make an impact rather than make profit out of it personally. The company will make profit. Profit will stay with the company. But the owner will never take it. Profit by decision, not somebody's forcing them. So this is a social business. Then we can address problems and design it exactly the way it will happen. It will, uh, it can be delivered even to the poorest person. So we created many of these. One which became very popular, we did a lot of other things, but this one became very popular, is the Grameen Danone one, to produce yogurt. Danone is good in producing yogurt, so we made it, we said, We'll make a very special kind of yogurt. This is for malnourished children of Bangladesh. Bangladeshi children, half of them are malnourished. And more, bulk of them are severely malnourished. And you know what happens if your child is malnourished. Physical growth is standard, mental growth is standard, you go through all this. So we thought at least we can do, try this. So we put all the micronutrients which are missing in the children into that yogurt. Tiny little cup of yogurt with all the powerful micronutrients into it and make it very cheap so that every child can afford it and started selling them. So you recover, it's, you recover your cost. It's not a free distribution because if it's free then you need to bring money from the donors all the time. So it has to be sustainable 
It has to be working like a business so that you can continue and expand. So this is the idea of yoga and micronutrients and so on. So this is what we do, it, and, it, and it is a social business. Danone doesn't want to make money out of it. We don't want to make money out of it. And our sole purpose of the company is to see how to reduce malnutrition among the children. So we have many other companies. Some of them are joint ventures with large companies, like Grameen Beulia, uh, water company from France. So we want to bring water to the villages. Our, we have a big problem in Bangladesh, problem of asset in our water. Half the population of Bangladesh drink poison every day. No escape from that. So we thought, let's try to find some escape route from that. Why don't we create a social business, make water very cheap, very clean, very standard, highly, uh, uh, high quality water, <coughs> but at a very cheap price so the villagers can enjoy the same water like anybody else in the world. So this is the Grameen view here, as a social business, not the intention of making money. So once you take out the profit-making part of it, suddenly your mind opens up in a completely new direction, which you never did before. So your creativity comes into the picture. That's where all the young people, they have the creativity to imagine the de design and create those things. All we need to do is to you apply our creativity. If you can apply our creativity, money is not a problem. It doesn't need a lot of money, and we are also creating social business funds to become sort of uh, venture capitals for you. If you have the idea, we can invest in it. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. the audience to ask any questions. Um, I will send the mic around if anyone has a question. Okay. Uh, my name is Enoiz Anwar Hussain. I would like to ask Dr. Uh, Professor Yunus uh, about what are the problems for you to apply this modern technology to improve democratic process in Bangladesh? Uh, I don't quite get it. Apply technology for the democratic process? To improve the democracy in Bangladesh. Well, the, you people are on the Facebook. That improves democracy. So we are talking. Telephone, they're always talking, cursing somebody or praising somebody. That's democracy. Shouting at somebody, that's democracy. We have the television, we have the radio, this is technology. So, this is already there and people are using it. You can't stop yeah, yeah. people talking, people uh, challenging things. And that's what the idea of democracy is all about. We can be strengthened, I'm sure. Right, thank you. Yeah. Next question, anyone? Hi, my name is uh, Imran Hossain. I was wondering about the reengineering this uh, idea, the concept of uh, social medicine and social economics, like from the top. Could you do like a similar process from like within Sweden? Like social democracy is supposed to be the idea, you know, the beauty of it was that it is like that, but we know it ain't happening. So can you just uh, help us out here too, maybe? Let me try if I could uh, get to your point. We're talking about social business. It's a different kind of business than the conventional business where uh, companies go to make money. The bigger money you make, more successful you are. Social business is a business to solve problems. Whether it's in Bangladesh, whether it's in Sweden, doesn't matter. Everybody has a problem. Sweden has its own problem, Bangladesh has its own problem. But we design a business to address the problem. So that that problem is gets resolved in a business way. It's not government, it's not uh, some mega company, it's you and me. I decided to do it and you decided to do it and we are in business solving a tiny piece of that problem. We don't promise to solve everything overnight. But if you find out how to solve the tiny piece of that problem, you've discovered a seed. And that seed now is a miracle seed. 
All we have to do is to plan that again and again yeah. so that the whole, whole problem disappears. So, so that is the idea. So anybody can do it. It's not, you don't need a special person to do it. It's just like uh, us sitting here, any one of us can do that. Uh, hi, my name is Tony Mafos. I'm studying my medical engineering at uh, the School of Technology and Health here at KTH. And I'm wondering, well, you mentioned, Dr. Yunus, about the um, young girls can be used for make, doing ultrasounds and sending them. And, Bangladesh has a huge population and it's a great asset if it can be used in the right way. So how can more people be mobilized to help in, in developing technology and bringing health forward very quickly? Well, the technology one part, that's what this school is for, develop those technologies. Now, on the other side, we apply that technology. We train up the young girls, from those high school graduates and so on, because it's a very simple thing. You don't have to be a doctor to take uh, ultrasono measurements. Uh, they are trained and they are doing it and everybody is uh, very happy with their quality of the job they are doing. And generally it is very impressed by the quality they deliver. Even the doctors have, have to compete with them uh, the way that the technicians and the doctors that traditionally are done. These are uh, just a village guard. But once they are trained, they do excellent job. So we are trying to create a cadre of those young girls to do that. And we're hoping that uh, instead of employing them as a kind of a, a job to do uh, getting a salary, gradually we'll make it as their business so that they will go around in the village out of their own necessity to make uh, earn their living, to find out who is getting pregnant and how to give her a good advice and good information so that she doesn't run into the problem of uh, 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 losing her life at the childbirth because it's still uh, Bangladesh maternal death level is uh, is higher than the acceptable that uh, we have put for Millennium Development Goals. So we have to reduce it within the next few years that we have by 2015. So we want to make sure that it's done. So you need a large number of girls to be trained, large number of these equipments to be delivered. This is a kind of pilot project that we are testing out. Once it tests out, then we can expand. Because uh, this, uh, the block, uh, all over Bangladesh, we can do that. Because it's a social business, it covers its cost, so there's no problem of finding money to do that. Because it's an investment that we do as well. And that leads me to another question, very relevant for your question, is the nurse in Bangladesh. It's extremely short supply. We don't have too many doctors in Bangladesh. But the ratio between the doctors and nurses is a very strange ratio. You have only one doctor for three nurses, uh, sorry, three doctors for one nurse for Bangladesh, which you know should be the other way around. There should be at least three nurses for a doctor. doctor. But there isn't. There are young girls sitting around in villages after villages who has done uh, their high school graduation, they have done their intermediate exams and so on. But then they left the schools and just waiting to get married. Why can't we train them as nurses? This will change their life. This will help our healthcare services. And it can be done very easily. It's, it's not a complicated thing, but it's missing. And then there's an international vacuum of nurses. There's a shortage of nurses globally. Right now, more than 100,000 nurses are made. Everywhere, in Europe, in the USA, in many other countries, Japan. So if you train up nurses in Bangladesh, they will not be stealing only the Bangladeshi requirement. They can work everywhere in the world. Why aren't you training them? How do you answer that question? So what we have made an initiative to see if we can help develop the seed, as they call, to set up a nursing college as a social business. So we take the girls from Grameen families, who are the poor families, to take the girls from poor families and get them into the nursing college to become graduate nurses. Once they become graduate nurses, we offer them jobs inside the country and say, if you want to go outside, we facilitate you to go outside. Because after all, you paid for your service, your education. Nobody else paid for you. Because we give them education loan to become the nurses. So they take the money from Grameen Bank as education loan and uh, pay the fee. And it's their own money. So I said, you are free to go anywhere you want. 